All right, swarm traps. Let's talk about them. I'm going to try to cover everything from uh, the design of the one that I use to setting them up, where to set them up, how to how to bait them. Uh, I'll try to cover all of it. All right, so this design has been very successful for me. Uh, it's a design you will see around around the internet. A lot, a lot of people use this. Some people use other designs. This one has worked really well for me. That's the plan I use, but it's actually simpler than that. All you do is go online and Google plans for a D Coats nuke. All right, so basically what this is, it's a decoats nuke that's about five, five to seven inches deeper. All right, so you can see here, the height on mine is 16 and a quarter. The number really doesn't matter. Just find a decoats nuke. And whatever their height is on the front, back, and sides, just add about five inches. You could do four, five, six, seven. As you start to get past six inches, it gets heavier and heavier. Um, another thing is try to, if you could, find a decoats nuke plan that uses uh, thinner plywood, something like seven sixteenths. I made a couple that way, and I also have three quarters that I used. So I had to find another plan that took those that into consideration. Um, so anyway, let's uh, have a walk around it. You can use any number of ways to keep the lid on. These are bungees from Harbor Freight. All right. That's all I do. That's a standoff on the back. That's a 1x4 pressure treated. You could use plywood, whatever you have. If it's pressure treated, paint it. As you can see, you have to put standoffs on there to account for the lid. All right. You can see my standoffs there. And when, you, when you screw those in, hopefully you can find the right size screws. If not, then you just go inside here with a sawzall or an angle grinder and zip off the excess that, that came through. Alright, so I'm going to take the trap down now. Talk a little bit about what's going on inside the trap. <clears throat> As you can see, it's just a Decoats 5 frame nuke. A lot of information that I saw about swarm trapping says that three frames, it's good to put three frames and leave this dead space. And through my experience with this, I have found that leaving dead space is a really good idea. The way I found that out is from initially doing this with three frames and a couple of thumbtacks to keep them from wobbling. First frame I caught, here you could actually see, uh, luckily I have the right lid here, just by chance. You see that old comb line there? What they did was draw their comb right down into this empty dead space. Then when I had to hive the swarm, it was kind of a pain in the neck to, uh, you know, to cut that off and put it into a foundationless frame. So I got to thinking about that. And I thought, you know, they like empty dead space and they seem to like the wood. They avoided the plastic. So I'll show you what I did to give them what they want. Five frames, but one, two of them 
are a foundationless frame. You can see that's nothing more than a little wood strip glued in with tight bond three. You could put it in with wax, melt some wax, hold it in, whatever works for you. I can tell you uh, one time when I was in a hurry I had to get another trap ready and I didn't have another empty frame so I popped out the foundation from one glued one of these in quick I sat there for a couple minutes it wasn't drying and I just I had to leave I hung the trap and I did catch a swarm off that trap so the, you know, the Typhon 3 does not seem to bother them alright so I want to talk about this checkerboarding of these foundationless frames a little bit. Like I said before, they, they drew that comb into the dead space, so what I'm doing is a foundationless frame, I'm sorry, a foundation frame, foundationless, foundation, foundationless, foundation. Alright, so these two are in here to give them that the wood and the empty dead space that they like and then the other three with foundation, foundation, foundation are there as a guide so they don't draw a crazy comb or cross comb it um, and, and every swarm that I have caught on every occasion I caught a swarm, they avoided the plastic. And they did not go on these foundation frames, which tells me they like foundationless, at least in a swarm trap. Now, once they're swarmed in a hive and have a little bit established, they, you know, they seem to use whatever. And I, I want to put uh, strings in these to give a little bit more stability to the comb. What else could I go over? Let me see. All right, we could talk about the entrance hole. The entrance hole, this is another thing that's, let me back, back up a little bit. There's a really good study on swarm trapping and bait hives. And if you'd like to, if you're interested in swarm trapping, I highly suggest reading the, the paper. It's not a difficult read. The name of the article is called Bait, Hive, bait Hives for Honeybees. It's by Tom Seeley and it's on cornell.edu. He talks about everything from the size of the hole, where the hole, which holes work best, which spacing work best, size, location, placement. That's a really good read if you're interested in swarm trapping. Again, it's called Bait Hives for Honeybees. It's by Tom Seeley, and it's on cornell.edu. All right, so these holes, it's a one-inch hole, hole saw. Okay, and it's over three, I think they say three and three, I don't know, I went three and four. As long as you're like approximately here. Okay, and then in your hole, you wanna take a nail. I set mine there, drive it down in until it comes to about here, and then just hammer it in. Otherwise you're gonna get birds, maybe mice or other pests going in there. Right. Then you need some type of door mechanism. Uh, Man Lake has round uh, turning mechanisms. I've seen people use a piece of wood on a screw. This here is what I use. Um, it doesn't really matter. Whatever works for you um, to close it off when you have a swarm in there. All right, so how about, let's see turn the back around. Another thing you want to do is make sure the, hot, the swarm trap has a little bit of ventilation. Be 
because they can, you might show up at your swarm trap and there's a big, you know, bivouac of bees there. And you think, oh, wow, I got a swarm. And then you come back a day later and they left. Could be for many reasons. One of them is that if the swarm trap overheated, they were in and then they didn't like the overheating situation, so they left. So I have some vent holes you can see here. This hole has a couple holes drilled in it. So I leave that one like that. You will get a little bit of confusion, some bees here trying to get in, but they all go in the main hole eventually. When you do catch a swarm, you want to pop these out, give them their ventilation so they don't overheat in there. I have another one here. This is just a three inch. See if I could focus on that. Just go up to Home Depot. It's a three inch PVC knockout. They sell these at Lowe's also, but the Home Depot is a lot thicker, better handle on it to pull it out. Right, you can see that there's screen in there. And there's screen on these. Okay. Let's pull out these frames. again. You're going to make a bunch of these. Lay out the first one, put your marks there, maybe drill your first two holes. Uh, and you drill them so that the hole saw, when you drill the hole, the two holes overlap and you have this little space here. I've seen numerous videos where people say that the bees seem to like that set up. All right, so if you're going to make eight or ten of these, just make a little template, right? and then you come back with your Sharpie on the rest of the, the boxes, put your mark on all of the fronts, and then you can, you'll have all the holes in the same place. Save you a little time. And you can see I did this for the back vent too. That's on these other boxes that I'm building right now. You can see. Just to save yourself some time. I'm not a professional YouTuber, as you can tell. Uh, I'm not monetized. I just do this to help other people out, save them the time that I had to spend figuring some of this stuff out. All right, so let's talk about where to, how about where do you place, what's a good place to place your swarm traps? Um, you could set a swarm trap up anywhere. I've seen plenty of videos where people catch them anywhere and everywhere. If you look at Tom Seeley's article and a lot of people that are successful at this, you see a common thread. Here, I'll show you a picture of what I've seen. Show you a little picture here. I can't go out in the woods right now. But basically, you want to try to find a little a meadow or a tree line. You want to be on a... Turn that music down a little. You want to try to find a predominant tree on a tree line that looks maybe looks into a meadow or a, a field, a small meadow like this, you know, or a big giant field. Here, there's a big field. All right, now I have a spot like this. You want to set your trap on a tree that's facing into the direction where the sun sets, if possible. You know, if you can't, then you do what you can. So, okay, if I was in this spot and the sun sets over there, I'd probably go like on this tree here with the opening facing that way. All right, now if there's a lot of quad traffic here, maybe you want to avoid theft, you go back in a little more. You want kind of a clear line of sight from that hole 
opening hole into the meadow. All right, now if the sun set over here, then you'd try to find something like maybe this tree or another one back in here. Here's another, another meadow. All right, so if the sun was setting there at night, then you want to go over here, find the fattest, widest, predominant tree on this wood line, hang your trap aiming that way. Now, could you catch one off this pole? Sure you could. Um, I found that it works better if you have the trap set in a, the largest tree in that tree line, facing into the meadow, towards the setting sun and you want to try to have it so that the trap has overhead shading from the afternoon sun. Uh, that seems to matter too. I found that out the hard way. I had a lot of bees on one trap that I set up on a, uh, oh it was like a, a metal observation tower with no shading. I had tons of scouts on it and they just never went in. I will show you, try to show you one spot that I use. All right, so this is a video of a swarm that I caught a couple days after this video. Play a little bit of it. As you can see, that's just a small clearing in the woods, little meadow. There you go, I picked the predominant tree. Another thing is to tell the difference between scouts and an actual swarm that moved in. When it's scouts, you see how they'll hover around like this. They'll hover, they'll fly around the back of the box, they'll hover. Now, they're not really on a mission. All right, so let me pause that one. If you, if you see that, you leave them alone, and come back, you know, maybe a couple days later or a week. And here's another one for contrast. This is another one of my traps. Ah, hold on. Sorry about that. You can see there's bees clearly landing and going right in the hole. They land, boom, they go right in. Land, boom, go right in. They're on a mission. And then when you see them with pollen sacs on their legs going into your trap, then you know you've got them. All right, so that's important to be able to tell, uh, you know, when you have a swarm and when you just have scouts. So how about baiting the hives. This is a really important thing because you can get a swarm to your trap and then they'll land. You'll have a big huge ball of bees here and you think oh great I'll come back in a couple days and I'll have my swarm. You come back and there's nothing. Too much lemongrass will do that. Overheating or too much lemongrass or other things. So I'll, I'll show you how to bait these. I'm not going to I don't proclaim to have, you know, this is the be-all and end-all of the way of doing things. This is just what I have had success with. All right, so when I bait one of these, I'll try to, I'll try to give it like a little bit of a lean like that. All right. And then I'll come in. One drop. See how it hit and ran down the back side? Okay. I'll do the same on the front, I'm trying to do this one-handed. One drop. See how it hit and ran down and spread out a little? All right, maybe you do one over here too. It's very important that you only have two to three drops in this box. That's all you need. And it's, it's real easy to think, you know, more is better, but it's not. So you want two to three drops there. And then you want a baggie with either a Q-tip or here, these are some kind of makeup daubers uh, that somebody gave me. It doesn't matter what it is. It can be a cotton ball. 
this is what you want to do here. One, oh, shit, went on the bag. You want to go one, two, that's it. Just one or two drops on the dauber or one or two drops on the cotton ball. You don't have to you don't have to dip the whole thing in and soak it. All right. You just drop it in the bag, seal the bag, okay? You could leave the bag half open and lay it in there. It doesn't matter. Then just drop it in. Put all your frames back in. See how I have that plastic one there? I would try to get that one out of the way. You're going to use a, you know, if you have a plastic one, just have it maybe in the back out of the way. Um, so your foundation, foundationless, foundation, foundationless, foundation. I'll show you another important thing too. When you're in your hive and you have you know crazy comb or old brood comb take this comb and pull these back out again rub this oops, rub it all over everything on the inside of the frame you don't have to go crazy and cover every square millimeter of it just do your best uh, on the screen some of that on the screen also okay and then on your frames come up here on the table okay on your frames rub this in real good to all over your frames you know old brood comb if you have it if you're just starting and you don't have hives yet if you're in a club talk to one of your club members see if you can get a piece of bark home freeze it you know make sure they have a healthy hive obviously freeze the comb for a week or two and then just wad it up and rub it over everything in your swarm trap uh, all right now this is the lemongrass oil that i use it's about twelve dollars maybe for four ounces I hear a lot of people talk about swarm commander swarm commander only has um, essential oils of plants like this as far as I know from reading their description on their website so if you want to use that you could spend thirty dollars for two ounces or you could get four ounces of this for about twelve and you can rest assured there's tons of successful swarm trappers that use only this so that that choice is up to you um, let's see okay how about height of the trap let's talk about the height um, in the article by Tom Seeley that I spoke about he tested different heights of on the ground uh, 15 feet higher he concluded that 15 feet was the ideal height. Okay, so to put it up 15 feet, you, you need to get into something like that. So, you know, I compromise. I put them where, with my hands raised over my head, I can grab the trap and take it down. You know, or sometimes I will, you know, leave an old log there or a, an old milk crate or something so I can get a little bit higher. Uh, now to set the trap at that height, you initially need something like this, just a little cheap, you know, go down the scrapyard and see if you could pick up a cheap ladder. You know, you're only gonna have to climb up one or two steps to set your nail, all right? In order for this trap to set, where your hands over your head can grab the bottom, obviously that hanger is gonna be about I don't know, 30 inches higher than that. 
So the first time you do it, you got to be a little bit higher. You need a little step ladder to go in. And that puts my traps probably at, I don't know, six and a half, seven feet to the bottom. Uh, people catch them with lower heights than that. The research shows that the, you know the higher the better so you know with the trap set at the height of my hands raised over my head I can come in and rebate easily uh, without a ladder and I'll talk a little bit about rebating them also this is important don't don't keep adding tons of lemongrass oil inside the trap on q-tips or anything because it's cumulative and if there's too much lemongrass it will you'll get the bees there but they won't inhabit the trap all right you come back you want to add a little more just pick up a stick off the ground just rub it here just, just rub it along the top i'm not dipping it in all right just give that a flick right inside. And you can take your dropper and right there. You could put more drops right here if you'd like. Like that. Because right there, it's the smell is there, but it's not, you know, overpowering the inside of the box. Now see how that's dripping? If that happens, you get a little wad of leaves or grass. Rub it all around this hole. All right, so that'll, most of it will evaporate. It'll attract them. Then they go inside. They're not overpowered with lemongrass oil. It acts as a repellent if you add too much. All right, so what else can I cover? I covered the height. I covered the placement. How about when to put them out? Okay, I'm in Northeast PA. I put them out around April, like the first weekend in April, April 5th, April 8th, or something like that. All right, bees really aren't doing too much at that point, but there are sometimes scouts out a few weeks before, um, you know, before they start foraging. So you want your traps out, you know, before there's blossoms, because you you will have scouts out at that point. Um, I didn't catch any swarms this year until I think May 3rd. I got the first one this past year. So my traps were sitting out there about three weeks. Um, okay, what else? Let me show. Let's see. All right, this is a really good video to watch here. You guys are all probably familiar with this guy, Jason Chrisman. All right, he's got a video setting up and baiting swarm traps. Really good video. Uh, there's another one by this guy. Out of a blue sky. Swarm traps and bait hives. I like this guy. He's uh, it's like kind of like Carl Sagan giving you information on how to do swarm traps. Pretty cool. So his video is really good, very informative, also. And let's see. The last thing I could think of is you know building your trap. If you have tools, great, build it with whatever you have. If you don't have tools, I can show you a couple things that I bought. Well, I had this. I already had this. I've been building houses and carpentry since like 1983. Started when I was about 13 years old. Tried a lot of tools. This is a nice gun right here. If I can focus. All right there, BTFP72156. That's a brad nailer. It'll staple in medium thickness brads for uh, assembling the high. Boom, 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 boom. And obviously, pre-glue everything. Type on three. 
is a really good glue for this. Uh, if you like other glues, that's fine. And then I'll show you this Brad Nailer. This is a crown stapler. Harbor Freight is iffy. You could get junk from there, or you could get something really good at a good price. This crown stapler, I've used the heck out of this thing, and it has proven itself to be a really good stapler for cheap. There it is, Harbor Freight. And then I bought this recently. My old electric stapler died. And I was in Lowe's and I saw this and I thought, eh, I'll treat myself. I don't remember how much it was. It wasn't that much. And I'll tell you, after using this, I think, my gosh, where were you all my life? It, it puts, you know, regular standard staples uh, right through screen or whatever. Really nice. If you're going to start building any kind of bee equipment, you always find yourself looking to staple a screen in or, well, here you can see on this one. See, I, what I do is put a layer of tight bond around the area. I lay the screen on and then I staple it right, so you don't get any ends lifting. Not a necessity, but I just do that. That's what happens when you're OCD. But anyway, here's the stapler. I'll try to show you the... There it is. It's a PT-50. It's arrow. It uses regular T-50 staples. This is a really nice stapler. All right, there's your crown stapler from Harbor Freight. 68018. And that. Uh, Obviously, whatever tools you have, you know, it's going to work. Uh, if you're looking for a table saw, uh, this is a rigid R4512 I use. It's about 500 bucks, very nice. Uh, my buddy, who is not into woodworking as much as I am, he needed one. We looked around, we tried a couple, returned a few, and then we found Lowe's right now has a cobalt 10-inch table saw. I think it's, I want to say it's 249 or 200 and you know, for a budget table saw, that's a really nice table saw. Lowe's, cobalt, 10 inch, and it's, it folds up on wheels. You could shove it in the corner real easy. Works, and it, you know, it works pretty good for 200 bucks. All right, so I don't think I have too much more to cover on this. I know it was kind of a long video. Hopefully I covered everything. Uh, I said when to put the traps out around April 5th. 